The number of people in England waiting to start routine hospital treatment has hit an all-time high, according to new figures published this morning. Well, those come as a survey published this week suggests that one in ten adults in the UK have turned to private health care in the last year. And that strength of demand was highlighted today when Spire Healthcare, the UK's second largest private health care provider, reported an adjusted operating profit of £67.8 million for the six months to the end of June. That was up 24.2% on the same period last year. Well, joining me now is Justin Ash, he's chief executive of Spy Healthcare. Justin, very good to see you again this morning. Thanks for joining me. Um, where are you seeing growth strongest right now? So there's obviously a lot of uh, demand for healthcare. We're very pleased with these results. We've driven you up 13%. Um, private care, both people paying for themselves and uh, insurance. There's a clear trend of people choosing to either have their diagnosis privately, to go to a private GP with our private GPs. Um, to have their treatment privately, but also more people are starting to take out uh, insurance, so personal insurance products are up, and employers are beginning to see private healthcare as a way not just for top executives, but for the broader workforce as a way to keep people, um, keep people fit and healthy. So that's a clear underlying trend in, in the market and in our results, and we've been pleased that so many people have chosen Spire Healthcare. There are a lot of uh, suggestions that uh, people are increasingly eating into their savings or borrowing to access private healthcare. Are you seeing different socio-economic groups accessing your services than, than you were in the past? So it's definitely the case that private healthcare is seen as an option by many more people across socio-economic groups. Now, we wouldn't want anybody going into unaffordable debt for private healthcare. Um, we offer affordable uh, loans, but actually very few people take those up. Uh, if you look at the economic groups, actually there is quite a lot of growth, first of all, in younger people who didn't used to use uh, private healthcare, but also in uh, people whose family income is 50,000 or below. And I think it's worth noting, by the way, that whilst um, a hip replacement might cost 10,000, which is often, which is a lot of money for many people, to have a consultation with a consultant to be assured about whether or not there is something that you should follow up might cost two hundred pounds, and it's not nothing, but that's affordable for a lot of the population who are choosing to do that because they are finding it difficult to see their GP. And a private GP appointment with us is eighty to ninety pounds. Again, it's not nothing. But it, our private GP is up 41%. So clearly it's affordable for many people. Now, as we've discussed many times in the past, you also support the NHS. Where are you seeing uh, most activity on that front? So it's, it's important for us to support the NHS. There are record waiting lists, and it really is all hands on deck to bring down these waiting lists. And we and the independent sector play an important role there. In fact, our um, income from NHS and our uh, activity there is up 17%. Why is that? It's because people can choose on the NHS as well. And there has been a government task force which has recommended this, which we welcome. So if you are stuck on a waiting list and you go to your GP, you have a right to have that GP look online. It's a simple system to choose which provider has got the shortest waiting list. And we work with GPs to explain to them how that system works. And nearly all of that 17% growth has come from people who are on waiting lists, um, being helped to choose to come to Spire. And we also do some work with NHS Trust. So there are some people who've been waiting a very long time, more than a year, and we'll work with NHS Trust collaboratively to help take some of those people who've been waiting so long and treat them in the hospital. So, yes, we're supporting people who pay for themselves. Yes, we're working closely with the insurers, but we're also working with the NHS because um, this is, you could describe it as a crisis of 7.6 million people, and we all have a part to play. Justin, you referenced uh, your GP services just now. I know this is one of your big investment priorities. How big a part of, of the business can it become? Well, it looks like it has enormous potential. So 41% uh, growth like for like. We will sh we've just opened now five new GP practices in London and they get busy straight away. I think generally primary care is an area we will be expanding because there is so much need here. 
so I think it's going to play an important part, as will other services in the community. We've launched the long-term diabetes support service because it's just as important to get diagnosed as to get treated. Um, clearly, that's important if you've got a sore knee, but, it, but let's remember, the quicker you get diagnosed with cancer, the more important it is. Um, and there are many ways to get diagnosed, and anybody who's got a condition they're worried about should get seen. People are coming to private GPs because you can literally book overnight, you can come in and see someone the next day, and you have a face-to-face -face appointment. And I do think the age of technology is exciting, and booking online is technological. But we all like to have a face-to-face -face meeting with a medical professional. And that is where, that's really what's driving our growth. High quality, safe, okay. medical professional, face-to-face. -face. Justin, got to leave it there. Good to see you today. Thank you.